Today we are looking at the guts of a wave track limited slip differential. So I've already gotten this one taken apart and ran it through the parts washer. It was installed in a transmission which um, had a uh, pretty massive catastrophic failure so I really just wanted to take it apart and clean everything and make sure there wasn't any metal debris in this differential before it got put back into service. And once I got it all apart, it does actually look like everything is okay. This is one of the uh, thrust plates that uh, is to help preload these uh, little spiral gears that are installed in here. There's one on each side of the housing, so there's the other one here. Uh, the kind of really neat thing about these is, well, there is one unique thing about them compared to other spiral gear limited slip differentials. They have this mechanism, their wave mechanism, in the middle of the gearbox. So these two pieces are what drives the, uh, the two axle flanges. Actually, it's like that. And uh, the two sets of spiral gears are what helps differentiate, the, the make the difference in speed of these as the road forces require of it when you're driving down the road, turning the wheel and what have you. Um, so in certain situations though, the one downside to a spiral gear or whatever kind of torsion gear, if you will, differential like this is you can they can still act like an open differential if you have a situation where one wheel has absolutely zero traction. So the one wheel that has zero traction gets sent all of the power and the one with traction would kind of just stay there stationary and you actually wouldn't be able to get going very well. Now if both wheels had very low amounts of traction that would be okay the both wheels would still spin a lot better instead of spending sending all the power to just the one wheel like an open diff might be more prone to doing um but when you have this weird discrepancy between the two where one has absolutely no traction or zero or near zero traction and the other one has some traction that's when they still can actually act like a little bit of a an open differential and that's what this wave mechanism is meant to counteract so I, I suppose the main thing is uh, there's this kind of plate that goes in between the two gears that are actually driving the axles. And the plate on this side that's actually for the passenger side in this particular diff, there are these washers that are stacked up. They're, they're not perfectly flat washers. They're you know concave or convex, however you want to you know, describe it. And they're stacked in a very specific manner so they can actually act like a sort of spring. Now it's actually gonna to be too much force for me to be able to compress them, but obviously under super high loads in the car, they will actually compress. So I guess the, the base thing that I'm seeing here is, since there's gonna be a little bit of a gap with this piece that's in the center in between the two, as one wheel is rotating extra fast and the other one's not really doing much, you're gonna get it where the driver side one has the wave piece on it. It's actually gonna force this piece when they have that two, you know, huge differential in wheel speed, this one will get forced downwards and it's basically just gonna push this, although with a little bit of spring give with those washers and there's this friction material, this carbon fiber disc that's gonna make it force in hard onto the other side to act as like a momentary clutch, if you will, to try and couple the two halves together. And, you know, I've seen it in action and it still will spin the one wheel with absolute zero traction a lot faster, but it still, but it will get some power to the wheel that has traction and allow you to keep on going. It's not gonna be extreme amounts. Uh, there still will be a good bit of wheel speed difference between the two, but it will in fact allow you to keep going. That's what's kind of neat about them. Um, but as far as the assembly goes, uh, these spiral gears, you know, if we flip them over, see we have the flat surfaces here, you can see they're actually cut in opposite directions. Um, so you obviously want to make sure, you know, the one set that's cut one direction is going on one side and then, and only engaging the one gear output flange. And you have to make sure you just keep them on the side that they came out basically is the main thing. So these ones all were on the passenger side. And the main thing also is you also wanna make sure the flat side, not the one with the hole, the flat side that's actually gonna push up against the, uh, the disc, the preload disc, they're all gonna go onto there. 
and then we take our flange, you know, the axle drive gear that uh, went to the passenger side, just kind of slot it in there like that. And actually, you know, I might take two of these back out. It actually makes it a little bit easier to kind of get the next parts in and out. So, I mean, if I really wanted to sh show you, you could see that there's this one lone washer facing up this way, but then the next washer faces the opposite way, and there there's multiple washers in there, and they're all basically facing the opposite way, so it can more effectively act as a sort of spring. Put that in next, and we got the intermediate piece that has the wave on it. You can put that in, and we'll go ahead and put our uh, remaining spiral gears in for that side. And then we can, well, you can go either way. You can start it with this piece. When we, I probably want to make sure, just so you don't have any issues during assembly, that uh, the wave pieces are completely flush, so this isn't sticking up awkwardly, and you know, giving you something to fight uh, fight against when you're trying to tighten the other housing half back on it. Um, so now these are going to face the other direction. They're completely flat pieces instead of the one with the little centering hole. They're going to face up because the other housing half with the friction material here, the little preload disc, is going to come down over the top of them. So these are effectively going to be facing the opposite way. I can start one by one getting them in there, but it's also going to fight me with this piece in the center here. So it might actually be easier just to leave that out and put it in later. So I'll go ahead and just do that then. don't have the best angle on it but I can kind of see there we go that is actually flush in there and with it kind of opened up I can even install Oop. maybe I'll have to keep some pressure on it so it doesn't collapse all the way but I can install a couple of axle flanges and maybe get a sort of illustration of what goes on in these so as you're driving down the road, the entire differential assembly is rotating. You know, the ring gear that's being driven by the pinion shaft is um, bolted directly to this assembly, driving the entire assembly. So when you're going perfectly straight down the road, there's no difference in the wheel speed of the driven wheels. Um, nothing is really happening internally in this differential in theory. These gears are all basically staying stationary. Nothing is going on. It's just that when one wheel starts to have to go a little bit slower because you're going around a turn, so the road forces are, are putting force on here, telling it, hey, you know, we need a little bit different speed between the two wheels that are being driven here. Um, that's when the differential does its thing. And you can see this you know, relatively easily will allow the two front wheels, in this case, because it's a front wheel drive car, to uh, rotate at their different speeds because of that. So this is still, obviously, the entire thing is rotating, but it's the, you know, a slight difference in wheel speed based on the forces the road is putting on the wheels transmitted back to the differential through the axles. Um, you will be allowed to have that difference in speed. Uh, but I suppose the main thing is, uh, if you are accelerating really hard, you know, the, the other thing too is, in one direction, it kind of wants to force up the centerpiece because of the spiral gear, and that'll, but it'll end up hitting the housing and not want to go anywhere. And that's when that little wave center wave piece gets an action to try and couple the two together to limit how much uh, difference in wheel speed there can be in the extreme difference sort of situations, I suppose. Um, it does feel like there's maybe a little bit more effort required to get the differing wheel speed out of it than a conventional differential. But it's still easy enough. So this is a normal differential out of the same transmission family. And just normal spider gears in here. Got it in there. And this is actually pretty easy to just turn one wheel with 
all the traction the other wheel without any traction this is what would happen inside the transmission this would be the passenger side wheel here if it were had all the traction the the outer one the driver side one didn't have any and you can actually see this is going to end up spinning faster than the actual differential is the actual you know pumpkin part but normally everything being equal the whole thing would rotate they'd all rotate together at the same exact speed until you go to either turn the, the turn the wheel basically then it it needs to have that little bit difference in the wheel speed side to side and then that's what your spider gears would allow but um these do it's just a lot easier for this to have one wheel if it has absolute maximum traction the other wheel has no traction at all to just allow the one to spin and it's the one that has zero traction and then you just kind of don't go anywhere um, and certainly under uh, high loads when you're trying to accelerate and you're getting wheel spin spin it'll really want to default to one wheel only whereas in one of these diffs even if it didn't have that wave mechanism when you get a situation where you're just trying to apply a bunch of power and you get to start to get some wheel slip it'll actually still want to drive both wheels more than this one would. Um, and certainly under power, uh, this one is going to try and keep both a little bit closer to even as far in terms of speed. And it is allowing some differential action to happen, but this will try to pull you into the corner harder because it's not allowing the one wheel to, to just spin when you're under that max load and, and power condition. So this, I've certainly felt that driving my car, when you're applying a lot of power in a tight corner, uh, the front end of the car, being a front wheel drive car, it does want to pull into the corner tighter than one with a stock differential does. Uh, not to mention these differentials because of the way that's set up, this main pin in here that secures to the spider gears that they rotate on it. There's just a one skinny little roll pin in here that sometimes will shear when you're beating on the car hard enough and the entire main shaft will come sliding out of the differential under centrifugal force and then it's game over for that transmission basically that doesn't there's no such weak point on a limited slip differential like this these are definitely a lot sturdier they're certainly more complex um, and they cost a good bit of money but uh, there's a lot of advantages to having this not only in terms of strength but also in just putting the power down to the ground and increasing your traction other than that I'm going to go ahead and have to reassemble the rest of this. There is one of these holes that does not have threads in it. And there's a locator tab here, alignment tab, pin. We just kind of get that lined up. Get the rest of this put back together. Like so. And actually, let me double check this. Make sure that we're not in an odd position for me rotating this around. Okay, it does look like... The little wave mechanism is sitting all flat at this point, so we'll go ahead and get this assembled. Get all those bolts put back together and torqued, and we'll call it good. Move on to the next one and doing this rebuild. But uh, anyway, since I had this apart, it's the first time I've ever actually had one of the limited slips completely apart. I've installed a bunch of these, but I've never had the need to actually disassemble the differential itself. So. I thought it was just kind of a, a neat little thing to, to show off.